I believe this is the hour for women who are going to carry an anointing like Sarah's. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, this is John Matarazzo with Charisma News, and I am joined by the Michelle McLean Walters. Uh, she is one of our authors. She has written the incredible anointing series uh, with just some amazingly powerful women in the Bible and the example that they are. And so today, uh, I have the privilege of having Michelle on with us to be able to talk about Mother's Day and the importance of having a natural mother, obviously, but also spiritual mothers and how we as sons and daughters can honor and respect our mothers, whether it be natural or and spiritual. And so, Michelle, welcome to Charisma News. It's great to be able to connect with you again. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very excited to be with you. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready for Mother's Day. Actually, I've been preparing my message. God has dropped some things in my spirit for mothers. So I'm so excited to have this quick conversation with you. Well, if you're already preparing a message for Mother's Day, um, tell me what are some of the highlights and what are some of the things that God has put on your heart? I want to hear that deposit that, that you have. Yes, I'm really excited uh, about mothers. You know, I, one of the major things I heard was God has given us beauty for ashes. Uh, I just this whole theme in my spirit with beauty for ashes. Uh, most mothers are so we're so concerned about the next generation. And and what I what I've seen is women have been broken over their some of their sons and daughters that are still not in the kingdom. So I believe that the Lord is getting ready to really honor the prayers, the cries of of mothers to bring the sons and daughters home, uh, the prodigals, uh, those that have once served the Lord, that this is a season that he's really bringing them back home. And, you know, a mother's a greatest desire, the greatest desire of a mother is to see her children walking with the Lord. So as I've been praying, I, I believe the Lord is really releasing a new grace, a new fire, a new fervor inside of women to really cry out for the next generation. So that's one of the, the nuggets I can share with you now is this is a season of beauty for ashes. This is a season for gladness, uh, for mourning. Uh, God is really beginning to turn our joy, our mourning into to, to dancing. So this is such a new season. I believe that God is uh, uh, releasing a mantle upon women, upon mothers, uh, where he's fulfilling the promises that he gave you. I, I really want to even speak to mothers um, that's maybe 50 and older. Uh, you know, sometimes when we get older and after some of our children are gone and we We've been serving the Lord for a long time. We think it's time to retire, but I want to release the word to you. It is time to refire. Uh, it is such a season that this generation, we they need your wisdom. They need your passion. They, they need the grace in your journey. Uh, so I just want to encourage women, don't retire. It's time to refire. I believe there's a new passion uh, for the next generation. And really it's time to cry out. There's a grace upon women to get a hold of the altars of heaven and, and really cry out for this, this next generation. Just because our children are, some of them are gone and grown and doing the, the work of the Lord, but some of them are not. So I believe God needs all of us. It's time for us to really uh, cry out to the Lord and he's going to really cause a, a new level of birthing, a new level of fruitfulness to come uh, from the prayers of women. Wow. Wow. That's uh, I, I definitely just kind of let you go there. And man, that's some powerful preaching already. So if this is just a taste of your Mother's Day message, just a taste. Uh, where God is bringing beauty from ashes. Um, you know, so many times I think we, we've he, we've heard that phrase, beauty from ashes, and it's a wonderful word picture. Um, but Michelle, if you can, how has God brought beauty from ashes in your life and from a personal experience that you're yes, able to share um, right now? Yes. You know, um, how can I, um, I have a book called the Hannah anointing, the Hannah anointing. And it, you know, the story of Hannah is all about bringing forth Samuel. She, Samuel had a uh, Samuel was a modern day pro He was a prophet, a phenomenal prophet, but his mother, I like to look at the story of his mother. Uh, she really wept and cried out for her son. Uh, she wanted a son, but God wanted a prophet. So, uh, the ashes that was in her life, I, I liken it to my own personal story. You know, my daughter, she was, my daughter was born, uh, with a visual, uh, impairment and it was really, really painful for me. And I had to find ways to, 
not just to raise her up as a, do- a woman with a visual impairment or with a handicap, how could I uh, take these ashes, meaning the visual impairment, uh, how can I raise up a child that will turn the world upside down. And that's exactly what the Lord has done. He's, he's, my daughter has traveled to 23 different countries. She, uh, she's a graduate uh, from a Lauren a Cunningham school, YWAM. Uh, she's uh, raised it and take, taken teams to, to different nations. But the initial, just uh, the initial diagnosis that she was born with a visual impairment, that was a, a time of ashes in my life because every person wants a, a healthy beautiful child, but I had to let, allow the Lord to take those ashes and really teach me how to raise her up as a powerful woman of God. You know, I believe it's Luke nine that says, you know, why did this, why was this sin? Why was this child born with blindness? And, and the, 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 the scripture says there was, it was not the fault of the mother or the, or the father. It was so that the glory of God can be revealed. So when I talk about beauty for ashes, I am saying that that whatever the ashes, whatever the pain, whatever, whatever the triumph, the, um, the whatever the trauma you might have gone through, the Lord can cause it to work together for your good, and He will bring just the beauty from it, the beauty of His 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 saving grace, the the power uh, of His presence of uh, being released and manifest in a child's life. Wow, that's. That's awesome. And I, I didn't realize that your daughter was in, was in youth of a mission. I was for eight years myself. And so, uh, to yes. hear that she went through and, and has done so much yes, uh, in 23 so different much. countries. That's, that's amazing. She's traveled and she's led them a couple of those teams. She's led them. I, I, I would teach her. And this is what mothers do. We, we listen to the voice of the Lord for our children. This is, I'm talking about Christian women. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. listen to the, the voice of the Lord for our children. Sometimes we think raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. We think just raise them in the scripture. And that's, that is one part of it. But I believe we have an assignment as mothers to hear what what was God thinking when your child was born? What, what yeah. was his plan and his purpose for their lives? So the Lord always told me that she would go to nations. And, you know, that could sound like a how would my child go to nations and she has a visual impairment? Not only did she go to nations, she led teams. So uh, it, it was, it's always been a, a phenomenal way as mothers, when we get a hold of the heart of, in the mind of God for our children and, and remember that we're not raising them to be our children. We're raising them to be sons and daughters in the kingdom. So it, it's been a powerful time. Yeah. There. So obviously I can tell that you're very proud as a mother of your daughter, who's been able to do these, these amazing things uh, for the kingdom of the Lord. Michelle, how do you honor your mother on Mother's Day? And what what do you recommend to honor spiritual mothers in our lives? You know, uh, actually... Uh, my mom passed when I was was three years old, so mm. I don't have a I don't I didn't have a natural mom, but I have spiritual parents. A spirit I actually have three. You know what God does see when He gives you beauty for ashes, He He always multiplies. Mm. So the, you know I didn't I wasn't raised with a my natural mom. My mom died when I was young, but I do have three spiritual moms and. And what I try to do, each one of them are totally different. They have different functions in my life. So what I, I, I definitely, you make sure you give them a call, not a text. <laughs> I give them, That's you good. know, I give That's them good. a call. And I, and I, tr- what I've done in the years, I, I, I know what they like. I know something that they like. And uh, I try to give that to them, whether it's monetary, it's mostly monetary because our mothers, we love money. <laughs> so we love gifts. <laughs> you know, so I'm just being honest. We love gifts, you know, but my spiritual parent, my spiritual moms, and I feel this way as a spiritual mom, the greatest thing our sons and daughters can do is really walk in their divine purpose to mm-hmm. really honor God in their lives, to, to really walk in their purposes. So uh, that's one of the ways, well, the ways I feel as a, na- a spiritual mom, I would love to be honored if my sons and daughters fulfill the purpose of God in their lives. Wow. Wow. I love, I love how you uh, earlier brought up the story of Hannah. Yeah. Can you bring up any other uh, biblical mothers or, you know, some of that, that teaching? Um, I know, one of the mother, one of the things that often stands out to me, the stories that's important in my life is Ruth 
And it wasn't a mother so much, but it was her mother-in-law and the relationship that they had there. What, what can you talk about with that? Yeah, actually, one of my spiritual mom was like a, a, a Naomi in my life. She was an a, a, a older woman. Uh, and uh, just like Ruth, she had, uh, I, I like the story of Naomi and Ruth uh, because it's laying down your life for someone else. Uh, Naomi poured into Ruth's life. Naomi was a woman who took what she had. She took what she knew. She knew she took her wisdom, even though she was in pain and she poured the best of herself into Ruth. So I just believe in this hour, uh, you, as I begin to talk about women who may be older and you may say, maybe I haven't done everything that I wanted to do. I, I didn't fulfill everything that I wanted to do, but find a Ruth, a younger woman and pour the best of yourself, pour the best of your wisdom. Maybe you, maybe you're not the, the great preacher, but maybe you're a powerful intercessor. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you're not the, the best cook, but maybe you, you're an avid reader and you can take the wisdom and the wealth of knowledge that you have and take a younger Ruth and see her as an extension of yourself. That's really wise. That's, that's really good. Um, Michelle, you know, we're, we're getting ready for mother's day. You yeah. got a great message prepared already. You gave us a little taste of that. And, um, I just want to give you the opportunity to pray a blessing over the mothers that are watching right here. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I really wanted to pray. Uh, I, I wanted to say this. I do believe that God is raising up women. I call them legendary women. You know, I've written a book called uh, The Legendary Woman. And I believe this is the hour for women who are going to carry an anointing like Sarah. Sarah had a passion for her faith. I do have the Sarah anointing as well, but Sarah had a passion for the promise of God. Sarah, I, I am praying now that God would begin to awaken the anointing upon your life, that you would have a burden to carry out spiritual legacy. More than natural legacy, we need women, uh, spiritual women arising with great grace and favor to move forth in the demonstration of God's glory, but to really be mantled with a Sarah anointing, an anointing to bring forth the faith of God and an anointing to teach the word of God and an anointing to move in the power of God. Just like Deborah, I pray that the Deborahs will arise. I just pray in this hour that there'll come a new heart for families. There'll come a new heart for children. There, I, I release over the women even now that feel as if though you've been left out or feel as if though you have nothing left to give. I pray now in the name of Jesus that you will arise in this season. And I pray that the passion that you have, you know, the love that you have. There's a generation of orphans. There's so many people that carry the orphan spirit, even during this time where their mothers have died and gone on, uh, you know, gone to glory. But I pray now that you will arise and begin to find your place. I decree now that every woman of God listening to me, whether you're a mother or an, a spiritual mother, that you will arise in the grace of God. You will arise in the favor of God. I pray for a mantle of business, even as Ruth, she was a woman woman who just did just sit at home. And even though her husband was uh, died, she was a widow. She still arose and God began to favor her in the marketplace. Even she got remarried. I pray for those women that are saying, God, I do want a husband. I do want to be remarried. I pray even now that that grace and favor will rest upon you now that God, that you will find your Boaz like Ruth. I pray even now in Jesus name, you may be a, a woman listening to me today and and you want to have children, but you find yourself to be barren. I break the curse of barrenness off of your life. And just like Hannah, when she cried out before the Lord, she went before the throne of glory and God began to, re he released an anointing on her to conceive. I pray now that faith will come, that you would have faith to conceive everything that God has placed in your life. Let this be a season. Uh, I, I just see in the realm of the spirit where God is going to begin to cause Many of you women that are watching me, there's going to be a grace on your life to not only just to conceive, but to give birth. I pray in this hour, there comes a birthing anointing that you'll give birth in the natural as well as in the spirit. You'll give birth to plans and the purposes of God. Father, I thank you for so many women that are, are watching me today. Lord, that it, let this, this Mother's Day be a demarcation in the spirit. God, that you have, you will move mightily in their lives. Let the prodigal sons and daughters 
waters come forth and you give us beauty for ashes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. My goodness. I'm glad that I ever, every time I ask you to just release a word, and you don't, you just don't know what's coming. My goodness, that's that's powerful. And it was not a short little, uh, little you know, just little rote prayer. That I can feel that from the, the fire within your bones. And uh, Michelle, I thank you so much for writing all these books that you've written: the Legendary Women, the Anointing series, and you really are calling women up to a a another level uh, with the Lord there. And I know you're working on something right now. Can you give us a little bit of a, uh, just of a foretaste of, of what that is and what God's speaking to you for this next coming message? Yes, I am writing a book on the spirit and the power of Elijah. You know, one. Of, this has been my life story. I just believe right now with all of, if you would say the deconstruction, sexual immorality, the transgender agenda, we need Elijah. You know, it's just so much I would call false worship, false teaching. And right now, I believe God is raising up those with the spirit and the power of Elijah to cause the hearts of men to turn back to the Lord. You know, the great question that Elijah asked, asked of the church was, how long will we falter between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. We're not going to serve Facebook likes. We're not going to serve followers. Uh, you know, trying to get followers and all of this uh, propaganda that's designed to turn our hearts away of a generation away from God. So in my book, The Spirit and the Power of Elijah, it is a clarion call to the body of Christ to come back to prayer, to speak truth to power and begin to walk fully in the preached gospel. Also, the Lord has been really talking to me about governing the heavens. One of the things with the Elijah anointing, it has a grace to call down fire from heaven. So I'm excited about this book. I'm almost finished. We're writing it and we're finishing it up now. So I'm very excited about the spirit and the power of Elijah. I believe it's going to be ready uh, by December. I think it's going to be on the shelves by December. All right. So we got a little ways to go, but I can tell there is a fire in your spirit about that already. I love Elijah and the things that you're talking about, man, they just resonate with my soul. And I can't wait to get my hands on that book and interview you about that book whenever that time comes. So uh, Michelle, it's great to be able to talk with you and to honor mothers the way that we've done it today. So thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much. With the woke world constantly encroaching, we need to keep our eyes focused on what is true. Charisma News is breaking news from a spiritual perspective, and you can trust that we won't ever waver from biblical truth as we deliver the headlines to you so that you can get the full story. Set your browser to charismanews.com to get connected and come back every day for breaking news from a spiritual perspective. Go to charismanews.com.